Hi everybody, it's May 4, 2016. The consolidation of police powers around the world is taking shape rapidly and making itself quite visible. And it should be a major red flag for everybody. It should beg questions in everybody's minds about what is taking place here. I want to thank the subscriber who alerted me to this. Chinese police are patrolling the streets of Italy. This was posted on Rupley TV yesterday. And I'll link below to everything you can watch. Chinese police there in Italy. It's a pioneering experiment. And if successful, the Chinese will send more police to Italy. Now, what could be the reason behind this? It is the consolidation of the world's police for the new world order. It is taking shape. It is so obvious today that it's kind of scary that so many people deny that this is taking place. Posted just a couple of days ago, EU in stealth plan to set up army by merging German and Dutch forces. There is a secret army being developed in the EU, and it's not just German and Dutch armies that are merging and their navies merging, but other countries are talking to Germany, Germany about merging their army with the German army. That is very scary. When, when you have the consolidation of this kind of power, when you centralize this kind of power, you have a very few at the top who dictate to all what it can and cannot do. You have tyranny. That is why centralized power is very scary. It, 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 the police consolidation in our country has been rather startling and unfortunately a whole lot of Americans are just not getting this. They're not getting that our local police have been federalized. So the central power just in this country has been breathtaking and reshaping our country into a tyranny. So let's just take one country, the United States, which had sovereign powers for each individual state. Local law enforcement had their own power. Sheriffs have their own power. No one can dictate to those sovereign powers. but. When you lose those powers and centralize those powers and federalize those powers and put them under the power of one government, the federal government, then you have a few people in control of all of those powers. And if those few people in control of those powers want to then reshape the power into international power, it's really easy to just turn over that power into an international force. And that is what is taking place here. This is a wonderful article on the New American. I will link below to it, but this section, PPP as a tool of tyranny. Now, the, the um, paragraphs before show how our local police departments have been federalized and privatized public-private partnership. This has been an ongoing agenda for years to centralize control of our police all over the country. The federalization of local police, the privatization of local police, and it is under the auspice of the United Nations. But just to read a couple of paragraphs, another weapon in the arsenal of the local police 
abolitionists is a concept known as public-private partnership. The PPP is often defined as a contract between a public sector authority and a private party in which the private party provides a public service or project or and assumes substantial financial, technical, and operational risk in the project. As in the case of the unified police department created in Salt Lake County, a private company is given control over some public function, typically provided by government. It is a tactic very much in vogue in international circles and is considered an effective way to sneak the influence and the control of the United Nations in the back door. Regardless of the rhetoric, the true purpose of PPP is to consolidate government and private corporations, giving them joint control over public entities, such as law enforcement agencies. The result is the elimination of local sovereignty and the insidious replacement of police chiefs, county sheriffs, and elected local councils with a board of directors of a company whose mission statement calls for the creation of an executive governing body that is neither fish nor, nor fowl, but is obliged to enforce international treaties and regulations written by the United Nations. The United Nations is promoting PPPs, public-private partnerships of our police force here in this country. And when you consolidate those powers, then you have the people in control of those powers to give it over to an international force. Now, the European Union also created Europol. It is the consolidation of their police. And Europol is a police of the European Union. So those individual member states of the EU lost their sovereignty to the joint union. So that joint union, the European Union, have a few globalists at the top who can then dictate that the police powers of the member states also merge with international forces, just like what we are doing here in the United States. It, it's actually, a, 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 the globalists are rather smart in taking all of these police forces and merging them together into a united force. Obama in 2009 signed an executive order that gave Interpol, international police, complete immunity here. They work within our Justice Department and they are above American law. They have com complete immunity, they're immune from FOIA requests, they operate in secret, they're above the Constitution and American law. They, the, there's no congressional oversight, no FBI oversight, no oversight of the American people, of the media. They are now operating here in the United States. And that should really, it should scare everybody what is taking place. The United Nations works with Interpol. They're natural partners. So in effect, what Obama did was give over to the United Nations police powers here in the United States. Our Justice Department leader, Loretta Lynch announced at the United Nations that her office would be working in several American cities to form what she called the Strong Cities Network. 
a law enforcement initiative that would encompass the globe. It is the globalization of our police force here in the United States. Do not think that these people are actually working to keep you safe from terrorism. They are globalizing our American police. That is the point of the Strong Cities Network, to establish a global police force here on U.S. soil. And eventually, all of these forces will merge together into one force, and we will see foreign police operating they will make themselves visible on the streets. They operate already through Interpol, but they w we will see, and it will be renamed as, you know, and it's not going to be renamed the New World Order Police, but all countries will be operating together and it will be under one centralized power, the United Nations. This is scary. It's happening. It's taking shape. And unfortunately, we, no matter what country we're in, especially the Western countries, too many people are remaining willfully ignorant of what is taking shape here in this world. But it is tyranny. This is not going to be sweet. It's not going to be United Nations peacekeepers and we're all going to be singing uh, Kumbaya together. This is the globalist reshaping the world for their own agenda, and we will all be slaves to it, subject to these tyrannical forces. This is not what the people of the world want. Even if they're ignorant, I can say with 100% guarantee, they do not want this, but it's happening. It's in our face today. I'll link below to all of this information. I hope that you circulate it. I apologize for not being, uh, my, my ability to communicate clearly these days is, is not so great. But I think you got the gist of what I'm saying. It's here, it's happening. And unless millions, millions upon millions wake up fast, immediately, and take action, all of this is going to be hitting us smack in the face so soon. It's And those in my generation and older, we lived with a freedom that, while not perfect, it was a freedom that we enjoyed and it gave us so many opportunities. When you think of the younger generation and what we are leaving them, it's heartbreaking. It is our responsibility to ensure that the younger generations do not have to live in tyranny. Everybody should take that responsibility seriously.